How's it going? Great. Nice to be here in uh, Philadelphia. I took your subways today. I give the urine smell and I give it an eight. It's the most disgusting shit I've ever smelled in my life. Was there a... Nobody scrubs those things, man? They're fucking... I kept looking around. It smelled so bad until someone was peeing next to me. It's on the stairs. It's on the platform. It's in the fucking subway car. Urine. My eyes are fucking watering up. Didn't affect anybody on the train. People here just say, you know, hey, uh, it's urine. You know, they piss and, uh, you know, you, you try to watch out for it. You know, I just... This is my stop. All right, take it easy. <laughs> Shit is fucking nasty, man. You guys need to get together as a group. Somebody's, everybody, bring a little Ajax every day, scrub a little square yourself. Clean that shit up, man. That is fucking horrible. You can't have tourists coming to town. Let's go check out the Liberty Bell. <laughs> fuck it. I don't want to see anything. Let's get the fuck out of here. This is horrible. This shit is awful. I was, on the, I was on downtown 6 in New York one time. It's a true story. I'm sitting there. I'm staring at the floor, not doing the sign thing, staring at the floor. There's like 20 other people in the middle of the train. All of a sudden, I hear this lady's voice at the back of the train. I swear to God, she's sitting there. She's going, she's going, ow. Let go of my neck. I swear to God, she's like, ow. You're hurting me. Let go of my neck. And you know, it's like you don't want to look when some shit like that's happening. You know what I mean? Just kind of sitting there going, fucking settle that. Make it go away. Don't want to see the rest of that shit. But it just keeps going. She's going, I said, ow! You're hurting me! Let go of my neck! So finally I got to look. I look down. I swear to God, man, this dude has got his girl like right by the back of the neck. He's going, you shut the fuck up. You shut up. She's like, Shut up! So I don't know what the hell to do. Cause it's like, I really want to help her out, but I don't really know how to fight. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna walk down the end of the train. Five seconds later, I'm gonna be going, ah! Oh my God! Oh, he's just trying to help! So I didn't do shit. I didn't, I just sat there. I was like, fuck her, she picked him. It's not my problem. Maybe she's into that type of stuff. I don't want to know. <laughs> you know what I love about that joke? That joke only works in cities that have subways. People who ride subways love that joke. I tell that joke in the middle of nowhere, people just stare at me like I'm an asshole. They're just like, oh my God, that's terrible. That was a disturbance. She didn't try to intervene. But why didn't she just separate the parties? That's some shit you do when you first come to the city, like, oh my God, there's a problem. I think I'll help out. Stab, stab, stab. <laughs> See, I said that shit to you guys. You're just like, you did the right thing. You did the right thing. It was already a tragedy. No sense making it a massacre. Somebody had to be around to describe the assailant. <laughs> it might as well have been you. Every time, every time I get on the train now, I just, I just feel like I'm just, I'm just pressing my luck. I was on the train about three weeks ago. True story. Listen to this shit. This black guy goes to get on the train, right? And the door's like closed on him. You know when that shit happens? Just kind of like, they're like open and shut, like, like almost like he's trying to dice you up. Like, there's like 20 people watching and nobody fucking helps. They're just like, wow, I think it's gonna cut his arm off. <laughs> So the dude is stuck in the doors. The conductor comes out and starts giving him shit. As he's stuck in the doors, going, come on, buddy, let's go. Come on, you're holding people up, let's go. So the dude at the door flips out. He's like, what the fuck are you yelling at me for? He's like, I'm stuck in the doors. Then he makes it racial. He's like, what, no fucking white people ever got stuck in these doors? He goes, I bet you wouldn't say shit to these cracker ass motherfuckers over here. It was like me and three other white dudes sitting there. And he gets into it with this guy, he keeps coming back to that point. Like, I bet he wouldn't say shit to these cracker ass motherfuckers over here. And after like the third or fourth cracker ass motherfucker, we kind of start like looking at each other like, dude, should we not be getting offended at this point? This is getting ridiculous. I can literally feel the heat from his fingers. He's going, cracker ass 
motherfucker. Somebody should do something. But you know what? Nobody did shit. We just sat there and took it. That's what sucks about being white in that situation. There's no unity. There's no brothers when it comes to white people. White people, we are individuals. We are the worst. We're just like, hey, I don't know him, fuck him. That's his problem, I do not give a shit. Long as I get where I'm going, this right here isn't happening. This here is happening from here over. I'm, I'm from here to here and here, here. I'm in this, I'm in this right here and that, that's over, that's over there. This shit's unbelievable. So we're getting to the point. I think one black guy could walk up to four white dudes, start beating the crap out of one of them. The other three white dudes, we're not gonna do shit. We'll be like, oh, hey, must have said something. I don't wanna get involved. Movie starts in five minutes. Hey, whatever, fuck them. The shit doesn't work both ways. I get into a fight with a black guy. Even if he's winning the fight, half the neighborhood still shows up and helps out. You ever fight a black guy? It's unbelievable. You start with him and then it's his crew and people running out of buildings. It's like Braveheart. There's like waves of black people coming over the hill. It's this big community effort. Shit, Shit is unbelievable. I mean, people, I got called a cracker for fucking 18 stops. There's like 30 other white people on the train. They didn't even look up from their newspapers. If anything, they're probably giving the other dude the benefit of the doubt, like, well, he probably grew up in a rough neighborhood. He's having a bad day. And even though he's calling us crackers, it's not us per se. It's more society as a whole that he has difficulty with. And we need to understand that. <laughs> Shit was unbelievable. Motherfucking crackers. Cracker ass, motherfuckers. <laughs> Fucking finger right in my face. Cracker ass, motherfuckers. <laughs> It was ridiculous. I'll tell you, that's funny when someone gets racial with you when you're white, because you're not allowed to get racial back. It's against the rules. You can't do the shit, so it's like awkward. It's like the other dude's going, I fucking crack him. You fucking white boy. You're like, you fucking jerk. <laughs> no, you can't do it, because the second you get racial when you're white, then all of a sudden they wheel out that podium and they have like the press conference. You know what I mean? You gotta be standing there going, I uh, disgrace the company. <laughs> I'd like to apologize to all the members of my family. <laughs> I'd just like to state for the record, there was no air conditioning on the subway. I wasn't thinking clearly. I took some cold medications. I'd just like to apologize. I, I, I have nothing against Mexicans. I went to Tijuana. I had a great time. Please, I need this job. Please don't do this. You ever see the white dude up there just, he fucked up, he's just up there begging for his job. <laughs> Please, come on, I got a mortgage. That's why white dudes, we get uptight sometimes, man. We get nervous in those situations because with political correctness, you're not even trying to say some shit. That podium can come out of nowhere. You're not even treated like, yeah, I think I'm getting a shirt. Uh, what shirt? Uh, the black shirt. What the fuck did you say? I said black shirt. I should have said African-American shirt. I apologize. I meant no offense to anybody. Please. Please, I'm already two months behind on my rent. Please don't do this. Please. Oh, shit. They got me. They got me. You ever seen that? Like, the dude's always like, the white dude behind the podium always thinks he's going to get his job back, too. That's what kills me. The shit is over. If you're white and the second you get behind that podium, the shit is over. Whether you did it or not, white people have done so much evil shit, somebody's got to go down. Once every six months, the machine got to eat one white dude. Spit him out. Whether he did the shit or not. So it's just like, dude, stop crying. Just pack your shit up. Disassemble your cubicle, because you're going home. Grow a mustache. Come back in six months. Maybe we can work it through. <laughs> we can work it back through. So anyways. The thing about having kids and stuff, you see like all these celebrities are adopting kids, like Madonna adopted a kid, right? That's like the latest fad with celebrities, right? You gotta go out, you gotta adopt a kid, but the rule is, it can't be white. <laughs> you know, it can't be white, it could be anything else. It could be African, it could be Asian, it could be Indian, but it can't be white. I think that's fucked up. What, there's no dirty little white trash kid in the middle of Tennessee, <laughs> curl up next to an outhouse, you can't hook him up once every four or five kids. Some dirty little white kid on a rusted out tricycle left right after a tornado, you know? Just kind of balance it out. It's just bizarre, man. How weird was that watching Madonna going over there, walking into that African village? 
Just come walking in, like going in there to pick out a baby, you know? It was like, freaked me out. I was just sitting at home like, dude, are we fucking buying Africans again? What the fuck is going on here? Dude, you know they were freaking out over there, like, fuck, they're back! Everybody link arms. Watch out when they smile. They're the most dangerous when they smile. <laughs> dude, why do you think they're, they're buying, they're, you know, they're getting these kids, man? I don't understand. I think they're up to something. I think they're trying to eliminate the middleman in sweatshop labor, you know? <laughs> oh, stop your groaning. Everything you're wearing is made from a sweatshop, you know? It is. You don't believe me? Take off your sneaker, just listen to it like a seashell. You hear that little kid crying and they're like, hey, I want to go home. I've been working for 23 hours for the love of God. Stop paying me in shoelaces. All right, here's one for you. I love the, uh, the internet, man. I love going on the internet because you, you get to see how like, crazy people are. There's all kinds of perverts and all kinds of like, you know, all like racists and that type of shit. Like, no matter what, like, you go into a chat room, within two seconds, it ends up, you just see these, these unbelievable back and forth. People just going off each, on each other, you know, someone writes something fucked up. I saw one night, some white dude wrote something fucked up and then this black dude writes, he goes, ah, you guys are just mad because, you know, the black guys are out there fucking all the white women. And then he writes, and you know it's true. And he wrote it in capital letters. <laughs> and he underlined it. So evidently, not only was this guy yelling, he was like standing on his computer's chair, like screaming, <laughs> and you know it's true. <laughs> so then the white dude writes back, he's like, ah, you guys, you're just fucking all the fat ones who are on, wel on welfare, right? <laughs> oh, it's hilarious. Come on, man. They were, just, they were blasting each other. So I'm watching this shit, and all of a sudden this other girl writes in. She goes, actually, she goes, I only have, she goes, I'm a white girl, and I only have sex with black guys because I can't deal with white guys with their bigotry and their racism, right? So I had to email her back, right? I just wrote back, okay, well, good luck with your continued fight against racism as you ride black cock. <laughs> I'm not saying these people are right, and I'm not saying that I'm right. I know I'm a fucking moron, you know? <laughs> but that Duck Dynasty guy, I know what he said was wrong, but I don't get the shock. He said that homophobic stuff, and people are like, can you, can you believe? Can you believe it? Yeah, I totally can believe it. <laughs> if I was in Vegas, I would have put 90% of my shit on that he was gonna say it. <laughs> I'd give him a 10% benefit of the doubt, just in case. Are you seriously shocked some redneck with a beard down to his dick sitting in a boat in the middle of a swamp shooting varmints? Like, what did you think he thought? Did you think he had like some progressive ideas on same-sex marriage? Yeah. Didn't he think, didn't he think exactly what you thought he thought, you know? You know what kills me too? That fucking kind of shit, that, that homophobic stuff, that all comes from the church, man. Doesn't that come from that shit? Well, they, they, there's, there's something in there. I never read the book, all right? I tried to. They need to fucking update it, all right? They update iTunes every fucking six days. Can we update the language and make it a little more user friendly for someone like me, right? No, that's where, that's where he gets all those fucking ideas. That Duck Dynasty guy, it's not his fault that he went to, uh, what, he went to Sunday school in like 1949, you know? <laughs> I think all of that shit comes from the church. They just fucking brainwash you, you know? You come, no, don't clap, don't clap, I don't read. I don't read, follow someone else. I'm telling you, they brainwash you. Come into the church, your brain's all empty, they just fill it up like a jelly donut. <laughs> Brainwash it. Say what we say when we say it. <laughs> say it again, then you can go home to your toys. <laughs> All right, I'll say it. I'll say it again. Now can I go home to my toys? <laughs> right? And you repeat everything they say. The good, the bad, and the fucking horrific. They stick a star in your forehead. You're a big boy. Yeah, the big people like me. You get on with your life. You go to college. You get a master's degree in English like this redneck dude had. He invents the new duck whistle or whatever the hell you call it. Right? Yours goes, what, what? Mine goes, what? A fucking what? <laughs> Do 
dude makes a zillion bucks, gets his own TV show, he's loving life, and out of nowhere, here comes that same question 60 years later from Sunday school, and he stands up like the Manchurian candidate. <laughs> Jesus likes hookers and lepers, doesn't like the queers. And everybody freaks the fuck out. And he's like, oh, that's what they said. And they're all dead. Oh, where'd everybody go? I thought I was a good boy. And you're just this scared old man getting yelled at in a boat. I don't understand. I don't understand why a group like GLAD, all right? I always forget it's gay, lesbian, ad, whatever the fuck it stands for, all right? Why do they go after the old guy in the boat? Why don't they go after the people writing the book, all right? Go and go, hey, could you please tear it out of, you know, those couple of a pages, right? They're not gonna do that. That's the Vatican. They're their own city. They got a wall around their own city. They're, they're brushing off cases of pedophilia like it's nothing. <laughs> they're not taking their call. Oh, what happened? Really? Go fuck yourself. Click. They don't care. So yeah, everybody's getting in trouble because these goddamn groups. Look, look at the amount of old people that got in trouble this year. Old people get in trouble. Right? That, that, that older woman there that makes the cookies on uh, the Food Network. Right? Yeah, Paula Dean, she got in trouble because she had the slavery-themed wedding or whatever the hell she did. You know? <laughs> in defense of her, you know, you want to you wanna have an original wedding. There's not a lot of themes left, you know? <laughs> you got to use the old imagination if you're going to try to blow people away with your creativity, right? I'm actually gonna have a Holocaust-themed pool party later on this summer. I am. Once everyone gets in the pool, yeah? <laughs> it was weird. It was like it was offensive, but like refreshing. You know, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how I feel about it. Yeah, she got in trouble that the old redneck on Duck Dynasty, that dude got in trouble. The owner of the Clippers got in trouble. And I'm not saying what these people did wasn't offensive. I'm not saying that shit. I'm just, what pissed me off was at no point during all of these stories did anybody address their age. You know, they're fucking old. You know, what did you think they thought? You never talked to a grandparent and asked the wrong question and all of a sudden it went down this crazy road like, whoa, whoa, whoa! Let's get back to the cookies, Grandma. Let's, let's, leave, that, let's leave that shit over here. What the fuck? Yeah, they're old. What did you think they thought? I mean... And I gotta be honest with you too, people were too hard on that Clippers guy, man. I'm telling you. For an 80-year-old white guy, that wasn't that bad. <laughs> Dude, he didn't drop the N-word once. That's unbelievable for an 80-year-old white guy. The N-word should have been carpet bombed through that whole tape. He never said it once. And if you go back and listen to that tape, I'm telling you, go back and listen to it. Other than Instagram, he's pretty fucking liberal. He's like, you can hang out with them, you can have sex with them, just don't promote it on Instagram. It was the weirdest, most compartmentalized, like, racism I ever heard in my life. <laughs> Something about Instagram, I didn't get it. Other than that, he was, he was wide open. <laughs> you can make a snowman with him, go to a water park, rub your bellies together. <laughs> Just don't promote it on Instagram. Hey, what about Facebook? I don't give a fuck about Facebook. <laughs> Keep it off of Instagram. Dude, you understand? The guy's 80 years old. Do the math. This dude was born in 1934. That's 13 years before Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier. First 12 and a half years of this guy's life, he watched all white baseball and it was fine. <laughs> First 12 and a half years, up next, Whitey Willoughby. <laughs> There's a line shot out to Peter Peckerwood. What a catch! Unbelievable. Into 
Yeah. Chris Pracker, what a, what, a, what a great day. What a great day for a ball game. White baseball, white players. Dude, his parents were part of the generation that finished off the genocide of the Native Americans, all right? That's who taught him his ABCs. You know, A, B, C, D, E, hey, get that savage off my property! Get out of here! I thought we killed all you people! Put a fence around them! H-I-J-K. <laughs> yeah. What'd you think was gonna happen? You know what, the owner of the Clippers, you know what his, his big crime was? He, he lived too long. <laughs> he did, if he died around 1969, 1970, nobody would've noticed. Dude, look at Walt Disney. Walt Disney was a known anti-Semite. But he died in the early 70s. Nobody gives a shit. He's got a castle, a bunch of mice running around. Nobody cares. This guy kept living. I don't know. I rented that movie, uh, Pride, recently. Have you guys seen that movie? Anybody see that? It's about the first all-black swim team and the difficulties they had to go through being the first all-black swim team. Let me ask you a question. How many of those white people are evil movies are they gonna make? It's like, it's all the way down to swimming. You know? I'm starting to run out of white guilt, you know? <laughs> no, it's like those movies, they started off unbelievable. Started off with Roots, right? White guilt was at an all-time high. I could barely even watch it. I'm like, dude, I got it. My ancestors are evil, okay? Please, please turn the channel, dude. Please turn the channel. They still hitting them? Fuck, turn the channel. <laughs> this is gonna be on all week? Jesus Christ, turn the channel. <laughs> then in the 80s, there was like a football movie. Then like Cuba Gooding wanted to be like a scuba diver. Remember that shit? <laughs> and now, it's all the way down to swimming, and I gotta admit, I don't think I give a fuck. You know? I'm not trying to be a dick, but it's a recreational activity. Plus, I've been in pools, there's been black people in the pool, you know? I never saw any white guy, like, trying to, like, fucking, like, prevent people from getting into the pool. <laughs> it's like, they just, like, making this shit up? I'm not, I'm not being a dick here, either, okay? Just to clarify, you know, I just want... Anybody coming up to me after the show like, you know, I was thinking it, and then you fucking said it, man. <laughs> I'm not saying that I don't think black shit, people should be allowed to put on some Speedos and go for a dip. I'm not saying that shit. I'm just saying these movies, like the characters aren't even believable. Like they always have to have like that, the, the over the top, uninhibited white racist character, you know? You know that guy, he's a guy like, uh, he's supposed to represent all the white evil, you know? He's like the dude they always have like screaming during the movie trailer. They'd be like, they were the first all black swim team. Get out of the pool! <laughs> He's got like a big vein in his forehead. He's just screaming shit, look, not even looking around, you know? Dude, it's ridiculous. Real racism is quiet. It's subtle. People look around first. They make sure the, you know, they make sure the coast is clear. There's disclaimers, like, dude, you know I'm not racist, but uh, these insert group name followed by fucked up conversation, right? <laughs> That's how it goes down. It's not just some guy just standing up there. I think I was in the pool. Do you approve of this? I work at the bank. Can I be fired immediately, please? <laughs> I'm just saying, can you just make the shit, like, believable? You know what the honest thing is in those movies? They're starting to give me a complex. You know, because anytime they do a movie about a group of people that thinks dumb shit about another group of people, it's always like white dudes. So it's like, are white dudes the only ones who think ignorant shit about other people, you know? No Mexican guy ever walked up to somebody from India like, dude, what the fuck is that? Is that like itchy? Is that bucky? What is it? White dudes the only ones walking around. Why, you guys don't eat cows? What are you a bunch of fags? Well, then why are you wearing sandals? You guys wearing sandals. This guy's a fag. No, I'm just saying, you know, just balance the movies out a little bit. Like, just have some of the evil shit that black people say about white people, you know, when, when we're not around, you know? Like, like, well, what are some good examples, you know? You know, like, you know what I mean? You're hanging out, you had a rough day, you know? What are some of the classics? You know, what, smell like wet dogs, right? 
You got headlights or something like that, right? Just, just slip some of that shit in there. Get out of the pool. Wash your hair, motherfucker. Right? Just <laughs> make it seem a little more. Dude, I'm just saying, it's all the way down to swimming. I mean, where the fuck do you go from there? We do like ping pong. <laughs> they were the first all black ping pong team. They're gonna steal the paddles. Denzel Washington. <laughs> <laughs> My daughter's not playing ping pong. <laughs> you got to go out there and show the white man your band, ping pong. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not saying that. Uh, I don't know, it's always just weird bringing this shit up, but... No, I'm not saying white people aren't evil either, because I know we're evil. I got that evil in me. And I do, I can, that's why I can feel it. That's why I try to suppress it. I try to dress casual, you know what I mean? I'm serious, man, I tried a suit on the other day, I felt it coming up, like, fuck, man, I want to take over some shit, right? I want to start telling people what to do. I want to go pollute a lake, blaming on my secretary, you know? No, but it's so hard. It's just hard to speak up. That's the shit, you know? Like, I was in a Target the other day, right? Not bragging, you know? <laughs> I was. And I'm standing there with a buddy of mine, right? He's a bouncer. He's a bouncer in this really, like, crazy bar, so he knows, like, all these scumbags. And it just so happens that one of them just so happens to come walking through the Target. So my buddy goes to wave to him, like, hey, man, how's it going? And right in this guy being like, ah, oh, you know, it's going pretty good, he just launches into this tirade about, like, like immigrants right in the middle of Target. He's like, how's it going? Tell you how it's going. These goddamn Mexicans keep coming to this country, taking all the fucking jobs. Immediately, everybody in line like, ooh, Eminem, let's read the back of these for a while. Wow, look at that, glucose, is he still there? I'm not looking, I looked at last time. It's your turn to look, I am not looking, you just look. This guy was going off, nobody did shit, including me, including me. I wasn't looking at the guy, even the people who worked at Target. They just kept ringing stuff off, like, ooh, three socks for a dollar, that's amazing. Think it's gonna rain out, fuck? Dude, it was a classic chloroform moment. This guy, he was doing, he was doing like a fucking Hitler open mic, you know? He was just going off. He was learning how to put thoughts together, right? How to speak in front of groups. Somebody should just came up, you know, threw some Skittles on the ground, you take them out, that's it. It's over. But nobody did shit. You knew there was like one guy working at Target, like some crazy dude peeking out from the back. Like, I like this guy. This guy's making a lot of sense, right? <laughs> and he follows him out to the parking lot. They jump in his El Camino. Now there's two of them, right? <laughs> I'm telling you, man, that, that's the funny thing about Hitler. Just let me finish. Let, let me work my way. Let me work my way through this idea. No, that's my, my favorite, my favorite sports clip is that Jesse Owens shit. I just love it because their whole angle was fucked up. He made Hitler leave in like the third quarter, right? He's putting down his number one finger, just fucking walking out of the stadium. Jesus Christ. Their whole thing was like, we are going to create a superior race. It's like, dude, I think we accidentally already did that. <laughs> you know, we sent a select group of people to the gym every day for a couple hundred years. It's paying dividends. They're fucking dunking on us every day. <laughs> dude, how quiet was that limo ride home with Hitler? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know he was talking crazy shit when they were on the way there. They were all amped up. We are going to dominate, see, hi, all this going on. That whole ride home, they're just sitting there all quiet. You're sitting next to an even angrier than usual Adolf Hitler. <laughs> trying to make some sort of small talk, like, eh, it is one nice day, isn't it? You know, nice boot. <laughs> Dude, I gotta admit, man, I'm, I'm fascinated with Hitler, man. I am. Just how the fuck that guy ever came in power. Because does he ever look like he's in a good mood in any of those clips? Everyone just, ah, 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 fucking hair's flapping around. <laughs> There was nobody even in the beginning to be like, dude, is it me or this guy? Was, this guy's a little crazy, huh? This guy's kind of a spaz. Total cock block. You can't even have him around women or nothing, you know? No, you know what is crazy? People can take over shit. That's what it is. Like, regular people, we, I don't know, you just never say shit. You ever notice that? Like, you can be on a bus, 
30 decent people, one crazy dude can take over the whole bus, right? Everybody's just sitting there, everything's great, then one crazy, ah, fuck it, just starts screaming. And the second that happens, all 30 people are like, oh my God, everybody's like up against them. Does he got hepatitis? Everybody's freaking out. It's like, why doesn't everybody just pounce on the dude? I think every regular person should just have like a chloroform rag, like right in their front shirt pocket. And the second any crazy shit happens, if you're behind it, it's on you. You just pull it out and take the guy down. Everybody jumps on him, you tie him up. Then you tattoo possibly the next Hitler across his forehead. You keep an eye on him, right? All right, here's one for you. I love the, uh, the internet, man. I love going on the internet because you, you get to see how like crazy people are. There's all kinds of perverts and all kinds of like, you know, all like racists and that type of shit. Like no matter what, like you go into a chat room, within two seconds, it ends up, you just see these, these unbelievable back and forth. People just going off each, on each other, you know, someone writes something fucked up. I saw one night, some white dude wrote something fucked up and then this black dude writes, he goes, ah, you guys are just mad because, you know, the black guys are out there fucking all the white women. And then he writes, and you know it's true. And he wrote it in capital letters. <laughs> And he underlined it. So evidently, not only was this guy yelling, he was like standing on his computer's chair, like screaming, and you know it's true! So then the white dude writes back, he's like, ah, you guys, you're just fucking all the fat ones who are on, wel on welfare, right? Oh, it's hilarious. Come on, man. They were, just, they were blasting each other. So I'm watching this shit, and all of a sudden, this other girl writes in, she goes, actually, she goes, I only have, she goes, I'm a white girl, and I only have sex with black guys because I can't deal with white guys with their bigotry and their racism, right? So I had to email her back, right? I just wrote back, okay, well, good luck with your continued fight against racism as you ride black cock. <laughs> you guys were awesome. Thank you so much for hanging out for the extra five minutes. I really appreciate it. We'll see you again next time. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Thank you. Dude, I don't even like those movies when they make black and white people get along, man. Even those ones seem ridiculous, you know? Because there always has to be like some sort of lesson in those movies. Just like, you know, I never looked at it that way. <laughs> and it's like that never happens, you know? Anytime I've ever hung out with a black dude, at no point during the evening has he like tried to like teach me how to dance, you know? You know that interracial footloose moment they always have to have in those movies? And I never go to his neighborhood and like try to like save a school, you know? How many times are they gonna make that movie? You know that movie? The white person goes into the projects. They just have to make a difference. You know, they just made that movie again with, uh, what was it, Hilary Swank? It's like, did you even need to go see it? It's like, let me guess, she shows up and they don't accept her, right? <laughs> and she goes home, she cries to her effeminate boyfriend who's wearing sweatpants and he's cooking something for some reason, right? <laughs> and he convinces her, he convinces her to give it one more chance, right? So then she goes back down there, she starts drawing out their inner beauty. Next thing you know, they put a do-rag on her, she starts fucking dancing. <laughs> and it's just embarrassing for all races involved, for the love of God, stop making that fucking movie. Dude, the amount of times they made that movie, I would think I would know somebody white who actually did that shit, you know? Just be like, ah, that's Mike, yeah, he saves ghettos. That's what he does, you know? I sit around, I watch Sports Center. you know, he's in the projects every weekend. He's writing his name on the blackboard, my name's Mr. Michael, all right, who threw that? Who threw that? It's just annoying after a while, you know? And it always fucking works out, too. Anytime the white person goes down there, I wanna make that, I wanna see a movie where it doesn't work out. Like the white dude goes down there the first day, just gets the shit kicked out of him, you know? <laughs> just leaving all negative. You can't fucking help these people, you know? You go down there, you try to do something nice, I couldn't get a goddamn word in. It's a three and all prescription. I get into too many arguments. I do, I got in an argument with this girl the other day. You ever meet somebody like within the first couple of minutes of meeting them, they, they feel like they can like sum you up? Just like, you know what your problem is? <laughs> and you just have this unbelievable urge just to take their head and just mush it into whatever they're eating, you know? And really hold it there for a second, you know? Like feel the panic 
in the back of their head is like the air bubbles become like less and less frequent, you know? You ever have like weird thoughts like that? Like random violent thoughts, you know? Like I actually had the urge to elbow an old lady in the face the other day. No, it's unreal. I swear to God, man, I was, going, I was going to get off a plane, right? You know the rules, when you go to get off the plane, it goes row by row by row, right? And this lady's all like, ooh, I'm 90, I get to cut everybody, right? So she starts waddling around me, you know? I'm competitive, I start boxing her out, right? <laughs> so I pick down my luggage, I swear to God, I did this. I'm literally taking up the whole aisle, and all of a sudden, well, I'll just go around him. She just starts waddling all around me, and then I just feel my elbow, like, dude, you gonna take this shit, man? Come on. <laughs> Dude, you got a wide open shot, you know? Just give her a quick one. She's not even gonna feel it. She's gonna go down, then you can play it off. Like, oh, is she with you? Is that happening? But I didn't do it, man. I got, I got my body under control. Like, come on, man, we can't do this shit. This is wrong. And I thought I was in control. And then she got like right about there. Then I felt her, my, like, my foot going, dude, we can still trip her. We can still trip her, man. Just throwing that out there. All the time, I do. I didn't do it. So we just went, oh, I didn't, I didn't, it just, you never think shit like that? You never just walk down the street, see somebody up on a ladder, you just want to go over and just, start, just shaking it, just to do it. You see people like eating, you know, sidewalk cafe, eh, having a good time, like, eh. knock all that shit off. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. It was just, it was one of, one of those moments. This girl was annoying me, she was eating something, and I was envisioning plunging her face right into it. All right, this is basically what happened, okay? She tried to say I was homophobic, I think she's full of shit, and this is the story, all right? We were in a diner, right? We just got done eating, okay, came out, I was looking down at the ground, and when I looked up, there was like these two dudes, like hardcore making out, you know? And it's like, I wasn't fucking ready. You know what I mean? I, so it was all it was, I wasn't ready, it's like, you know, if you rent a Brokeback Mountain, or I'm walking through the village, I can get my brain prepared for what I might see, but it's like, I wasn't fucking ready. You know, I, I just eaten these fries. I'm like, ah, you dumb shit, you gotta go to the gym. You know, it's in my own head. And when I looked up, these two dudes, one guy had a beard, there's, ah, just going at it. So the second I looked up, I just went like, ugh. I just looked away. That's all I did real quick, just, ugh. And I just, and then this girl was just glaring at me, like, oh my God, what's, what's that all about? What's that? Were you like homophobic? Are you homophobic? I go, no, I'm not homophobic. I got no hatred, you know. I got no hatred in, in that area. She goes, well, what was that all about? I go, I, I don't, it, was, it was just like a visual thing. It was just, you know. She goes, what are you talking about? I go, well, put it this way. The first time I ever saw a porno, I was like 14 years old. I had no idea what doggy style was, but the second I saw it, my brain was just like, that is the shit. I want to fucking do that. At some point in my life, I want to convince a woman to do that with me, right? My brain was like, yes, my dick was up. Everything was in agreement that this was a wonderful thing and I had no idea what it was. But in the same token, if at any point during that porno, if somebody started like kissing somebody's feet or like sucking on their toes, it was just, it was just gross to me. But that doesn't mean I hate feet and I don't want them in my neighborhood. That just means I'm not into that shit. It's the same thing with the gay dudes. I have no hatred in my heart for gay people, all right? They're cool, they're funny, generally speaking, they're neat, you know? <laughs> I got a lot of positive things to say about them, you know? They move to your neighborhood, the property value goes up because they make it fabulous, right? They can't reproduce, so they're not making more in-the-way people walking around looking up at shit. Yeah! They're wonderful for the environment, God bless them. But how far does political correctness go that I gotta look at some shit that's making my brain go like, ah, fucking look away, right? I'm supposed to override that, start like cheering on the relationship, like, woo, grab his ass! Yeah, run your fingers through his chest hair! Dude, it's ridiculous. You're gonna tell me some gay guy never walked down the street, seen two straight, pe straight people just going at it, and never just thought like, oh God, why would you? Just, mm. I had to like walk it off. He can't help it. That's just how his brain is wired, right? He's just like pussy, and I'm like dick, right? But there's no hatred in that. I can't, I don't know. I just couldn't fucking explain it to this girl. 
She's like, yeah, I think I'm having four. It's like, no, I was on the same level. You ever see a big guy eating a sandwich, right? And he gets a little mustard on the side of his face, right? You fucking look away. But that doesn't mean you want him to choke on the sandwich and you want to get a bunch of friends to beat the shit out of him for eating the sandwich, right? Dude, whatever you put your mouth on is the most intimate thing ever, right? There's no middle ground. It's either like, yes, or fuck that. There's no middle, eh, you know, balls, right? <laughs> You just, and you just insert yourself into the situation. Like when you watch a porno, there's, there's a guy and a, and a girl, but you're not looking at the guy. Even though he's right there, you're just looking at the girl and you're just thinking, yeah, that's what I would be doing to her, right? <laughs> but if you took the girl out and there was just some guy just sitting there just dry humping, you'd be like, this shit is horrific, right? <laughs> so when I'm looking at two dudes kissing, it's like a stalemate. There's no place for me to insert myself into that situation. It isn't horrific, right? Does that mean I'm fucked up, you know? You know what I love about that joke? You guys got it after like the first example, yet I felt the need to give you 58 more examples. <laughs> so. It's good to be here, man. It's nice to be back in town here in New York. I didn't do shit today. I didn't. I'm a loser, man. Just sat around watching TV and all that type of stuff. And I'm gonna tell you something, man. You know what? I'm sick of pedophiles. <laughs> yeah, sex offenders. Dude, they're on every channel. Everybody is doing something on sex offenders. You know, it's like, dude, I got it. There's people out there touching kids, you know? <laughs> but it's not everybody. It's a very small portion of the population. So, you know, take it down a few because you're making it fucking awkward out there. Dude, you can't say hi to kids anymore. I love kids. I love kids. I like making faces at them on the airplane, making them laugh. Now parents are like, is that sex offender? They start huddling their kids in, making me feel like a freak, you know? I'm terrified of kids now. Remember back in the day when a kid would come walking up to you, you, you could pat him on the head. Hey, hey, Rusty, how you doing, right? Now a kid comes walking up and I'm like, dude, get that thing the fuck away from me. Get it away from me. I'm serious, dude, get it away from me. Hands are up high, not aroused, just terrified, please, for the love of God. I'm serious, get that thing away from me, all right? Don't need the FBI or have to catch a predator guy to come walking out. Like, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? No, 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 sit down. That show to catch a predator, man, that is horrible PR for white people, huh? Jesus Christ. Can they move that show to an urban area every once in a while? Just catch a couple of R. Kelly's peeing on some kids, you know? Just balance it out a little bit. It's like this every dude walking in that house got to look like me, like, hey, man, a fucking eight-year-old, how are you? No, but it's unbelievable. Everybody is talking about pedophiles and all that type of stuff. I, I don't know. Maybe there's more of them nowadays. Is it, is it like easier now? Because the internet, you know? You know, because back in the day, you had to work for it, right? You know, you had to get an ice cream truck, you had to buy some bucket you had to figure out when the kids got out of school, you pick a straggler, you know? Now you just go on the internet, you just Google www.eight-year-old whose parents are falling asleep, you know, you're in there. No, it's unreal. When was the last time you saw a kid riding a bicycle down the street? You're never gonna see that shit again. You never see him playing outside. The parents just have them inside now, man. They're just feeding them and feeding them, you know? Just making them fatter and fatter. I'm trying to make them unfuckable. <laughs> that's, that's what it is. That's why you see all these 450 pound eight year olds just come, just come wandering out of the house. You can't get that kid in the car. I'm serious, pedophiles in general, they're very skinny people. They gotta start chalking up their forearms and fucking blowing out their back. <laughs> it's just a theory, people. Seriously. Honestly, don't take this shit too seriously. Does he really think that? Does he think that that's why there's... I don't know. I'm, in, I'm into uh, conspiracy theory, man. That's my thing. You guys into that shit? 
You read the stuff I do. I think fast food, fast food, I think it's like a conspiracy, you know? I think that's how they just keep us dumb. You can't even think after a while. You ever notice that shit? Like, you ever have your whole day planned out, eat one Egg McMuffin and you're just on the couch? Yeah, you know what, fuck my dreams. I'm just gonna lay here for a while. Gotta stretch out and have a good time. Dude, it's, it's unbelievable. Healthy food, you can't, you can't even smell it. You have a bag of apples right in front of my face. I, I, my eyes are closed, I can't smell it. 200 miles away, oh fuck, is that, is that KFC? Hey, you wanna get some chicken? <laughs> Go there and you get a bucket of it. I'm telling you, you never notice that? You ever notice whenever the government fucks up, all of a sudden like McDonald's has like a new sandwich? You know? <laughs> You're just sitting there screaming at your TV, how can I get pardon all these CEOs? New McRib, oh, I'm gonna fucking try it. <laughs> Shove it down your face. I was sick too. I was sick all through September. Three weeks, I was sick, man. I didn't take any medicine though because I don't trust the shit anymore. I'm paranoid, man. I've noticed over the last couple of years, any new medicine that they advertise on TV, the last 20 seconds of the commercials are just totally psycho side effects to whatever they're trying to advertise. You ever notice that shit? And they always try to slide it in real quick too, like it's no big deal. Just like, yeah, it cures your headache. Everything's great. Then your ear falls off, you can't feel your feet, and you won't recognize your mother. 40% of the people were bleeding from the ass, and one guy thought he was a pigeon. I'm not even exaggerating that bad. I saw this shit the other night, right? It's supposed to cure like stomach ass. End of the commercial, the three side effects were migraine headaches, abdominal pain, and diarrhea. Who the hell would try that shit? You basically try that shit. You go from like one problem to three. You're just walking away like, how's your stomach ass? It's great. <laughs> Never felt better. <laughs> no, diarrhea is not a side effect. That is a major goddamn problem. All right, where I'm from, the evening is over. What are there actually people out there like, oh, this little diarrhea, don't worry. Just gonna kind of slam my ass cheek shut. I'll be all right. Actually, diarrhea is the least of my problems at this point. It's helping to take my mind off the migraine headache and the knifing abdominal pain in my stomach. Dude, you don't try anything that causes diarrhea. Diarrhea is evil. That is basically your body going, you know what? You have something so foul within your system. We can't wait for the normal process of elimination. We have to get rid of that shit right now. But dude, I'm still on the bus. Fuck it, now! You have some evil in your ass, and it has got to go immediately. We must override all do not shit in your pants systems because you, sir, have a storm brewing. All right, my name's Bill Burr. You guys have a lot of fun. Thank you very much. I've actually finally come to the point. I want to have a kid, and I don't think it's that hard. I don't. Part of me really believes that, and the other part is I just like pissing off people with kids, you know? Whenever you say shit like that, oh, you have no idea how difficult it is. This is a great one to say. Well, I mean, I got a dog. I mean, you know, how much stuff? Dude, you can't even fucking compare it to a dog. Yeah, I can. I just did, and I'll do it again. <laughs> Mine's got four legs. Yours only has two. Go ahead. Yours bites someone and gets a timeout. Mine gets put down. <laughs> Stakes are raised. I do have a dog. That doesn't count for anything. I've never understood that, you know? I love my dog, but uh, I've learned a lot being a dog owner, man, you know? Any dog's a good dog unless you're a psycho, you know? I got a pit bull. It's still a great dog unless you're a fucking psycho. And evidently, I'm a psycho because my dog has been a, just been a complete maniac over the last, like, six months, you know? I didn't realize that dogs feed off your vibes, you know? Like, if you're chilling, they're chilling, you know? If you're sleeping, they're sleeping. But if you're a psycho like me and you're screaming at the ref on TV being like, dude, you gotta be fucking kidding me! I didn't realize the dog was over in the corner being like, yeah, you gotta be fucking kidding me. <laughs> this is bullshit. I don't know what this guy's mad at, but I love this guy. This guy feeds me. Is it the door? Are you mad at the door? <laughs> yeah, I had no idea I was amping this dog up. I'm so selfishly in my own world. I'd be like on the computer and would crash. You'd be like, oh, really? Really? Dog's over in the corner with like a chew toy. 
I never noticed like that game seven look she was getting on her face. And one day I amped her up too much, had no clue. And I went outside, we were just walking down the street and some poor bastard comes the other way and the dog's like, that's that motherfucker. Yeah! Lunge at this guy, I had to pull her back. I'm like, dude, I'm sorry, man, I'm sorry. She's never done anything like that, right? Looking down at the dog, what's wrong with you? Dog's looking up at me like, huh? I got that son of a bitch, didn't I? I love you, you feed me, I got you. How the hell did you see him that far away, man? Your ears must be better than mine. It's unbelievable, right? Then I got nervous. I got nervous around my own dog. I started thinking, fuck, are pit bulls really like this? Do they just go psycho? Man, this is nuts, right? That's another bad vibe to have around your dog because they pick up on that vibe, right? This dude comes walking down the street and I immediately just start thinking like, oh shit, she gonna do it again? Oh shit, oh shit. Dog just looks at me like, oh shit, what? Oh shit, what? Him, 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 ah! Runs at another guy, had to pull her back. Jesus Christ, I'm sorry. Looking down at the dog, dog's trying to chest bump me and shit, right? Dude, it got so bad one day, she almost, she almost ate a landscaper, right? Yeah, so I'm like, I gotta, I gotta take this thing to a trainer, man. So I load it up in the Prius and I drive over there, right? Yeah, I have a Prius. Go ahead, judge me. I love that shit. If you have a Prius, people, you know, you can't win. You got a truck with a big lift kit, people, oh, it's probably because he has a little dick. Right? How come it's not because he has a dick down to the floor? Maybe that's why he needs all that clearance, right? You know? <laughs> if that means you have a little dick, then if, if I have a Prius, doesn't that mean I, I have a huge dick, right? Because according to my friends, it means I'm a fag, right? <laughs> Anyways. Let me towel off here for a moment. So I fucking take this dog down to this trainer, right? And I show up, got the dog in the back. The trainer comes out, he's got his hat on backwards, he got stubble, you know, big, large cargo pants, you know all shorts on and stuff. I'm thinking, this guy's a psycho, right? And I look at my dog, my dog's like sizing him up. I'm like, this is perfect, he can handle him. So the guy goes, all right, when you hand this dog to me, make sure you got the leash totally taut like that, all right? Don't have any slack in it. I said, no problem, right? And somehow I fucked up, I left a little slack in it, and this dog just lunged right at the dude's balls, all right? And just barely missed him and just got a big mouthful of his big cargo shorts, right? And immediately he just grabs it and goes, all right, get out of here, get out of here, right? But instinctually, I tried to help out, and he just goes, get the fuck out of here! Yeah, I didn't realize that the only reason why the dog was acting like that was because I was there and it felt like it needed to protect me. So the second I left, the situation immediately just became awkward, right? The dog was just sitting there like, okay, like I thought we were like together and we were like friends and you were some bad guy and all of a sudden you just drove away and I don't know how to feed myself. You want to be friends? <laughs> yeah, I come back four days later, the dog's laying at the guy's feet, right? He's rubbing her belly, she's reaching up, playing with his goatee and shit. And he goes, go ahead, have a, have a seat. Why don't you, uh, why don't you uh, take me through your day with this dog? Immediately, I started getting like this first 48 vibe, right? <laughs> like they're coming at me. So I got like defensive. I'm like, oh, what do you mean? I take it for a hike every morning. He goes, that's good, that's good. Anything, you know, special happen on the hike? I'm like, well, you know, I don't know, she takes a shit. I pick it up. It's like, all right, easy. <laughs> You play any games with her? I go, yeah, at the end of the hike. I let, her, I let her, you know, for reward for going on the hike, I let her run up the stairs by herself. I go, go on, Cleo. I let her run up the stairs, and I count five, 1,000, and then I run up there, and then we start wrestling. Put her in a headlock, sweep her front legs, ah, right? But her tail's wagging, you know? She's not growling. I go, that's a good thing, right? He's like, no, it's fucking horrible. I'm like, why? He goes, you just taught your dog to claim the house and then fight for it every fucking day after the hike. No wonder this thing's trying to attack the mailman, you know? So then I got upset. I'm like, wait a minute, dude, you're telling me like I can't even play with my dog? He's like, no, you can play with it, but you gotta bring that energy back down. The Problem is, is you keep amping this thing up, getting that Mike Singletary look on his face. And then by the time you walk out, doesn't matter if you're relaxed, mentally the dog is like walking through the tunnel at the Rose Bowl, like this is what we play for. <laughs> somebody hit somebody. Yeah, so I'm actually learning to control my temper because of a fucking pit bull. So here's something I saw the other day I've not seen in a long time. You know what I saw? I saw balls on a dog. <laughs> hey, remember that shit? Dude, I have not seen that since like the late 90s. I was literally sitting there looking like, I remember that shit. Dogs used to have balls, I remember that. 
Come at you. Hit your friend. Ah, hey, look at his balls. You know, and everybody would laugh. No, but somewhere along the line, it became socially acceptable to cut your dog's balls off, whether there's anything wrong with them or not. Under the whole fear of like, well, if we don't do it, he's gonna fuck another dog. They're gonna make more dogs. And what are we gonna do with all these dogs? They're not gonna have homes? So what are we gonna do? I love that shit, what are we gonna do? It's like, dude, they're animals. Just let them go. They'll be fine. They got fangs, they got claws, they'll form packs, you know? They'll help with the obesity problem in this country, you know? You come stumbling out of a cheesecake factory just like a herd of fucking Rottweiler running at you. Right? You gotta run to your SUV, dive in Dukes of Hazard style, right? No, I'm pro dog balls. I am. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Dog should be able to, you know, fuck who he wants to and... It's ridiculous. No, I want to get a dog. I want to get a dog. I've been dying to get a dog. And immediately, my girls immediately, well, we have to get it from getting a dog, we have to get him fixed. I'm like, well, why do we have to get him fixed? Well, yeah, that's what you're supposed to do. I don't, and I'm like, well, you're not a veterinarian. She's like, well, neither are you. Great, then it's a stalemate. Neither one of us knows what the fuck we're talking about. So let's not start cutting anything off the animal, right? <laughs> so of course, she, she's a female. She's got to go out and prove me wrong. Goes out and gets a book. Okay, look at this. See, it says right here. Um, you get your dog fixed, he's less likely to be aggressive. Hmm? Okay? Okay? No. no, listen. God, you're such an asshole. Just listen. And then it said, he's less likely to rip up the furniture. Yeah, there's that thing, you know. I was just like, sweetheart, when we were a kid, we had a family dog. All right, he had his balls. Okay, yeah, sure. Occasionally, he humped your leg, you know? But generally speaking, he just laid around, he begged for food, you came home, he was excited, but he wasn't wearing a raincoat, like jerking off or something, you know? <laughs> He lived, he lived for 15 years without incident with his balls. You know, no sexual harassment, nothing. No, I, I, think, I, think, it's, I think it's weird how we're, like, human beings are trying to control the population of animals, you know? Like anytime the deer population gets out of control, some dude would literally get on TV and be like, all right, the deer population is up to about 17, 1800. Realistically, we need to get that number down about five, six of them, all right? <laughs> so start them off, you got a gun, fucking shoot one in the face. <laughs> I'm just sitting at home like, what are the deer doing that's so bad for the environment, you know? They're gonna eat all the fucking grass. They're coming up to trees, just nibbling. Just nibbling. Dude, the deer didn't put a hole in the ozone layer, all right? That's not a bunch of dogs clogging up the freeways. It's us, right? We can fuck all we want. No one's gonna stop. You could, have, you could have 15 kids, have a 16th on the way. No one's gonna get on TV and be like, all right, Paul is still fucking. <laughs> Start them off, you got a gun. Fucking shoot him in the face. Do what you gotta do. This guy, he's out of control. No, it's great. It's great, man. You can just keep banging away. You can just keep banging away, making one useless, mediocre, not gonna invent shit kid after another. <laughs> no, I don't understand people like that. So don't you realize after your third loser kid, you don't have the DNA to make somebody special? It's like, what are you doing? All you're doing, you're just making more in the way people just walking around, looking up at shit as you're trying to get down the sidewalk, you know? Oh, you know that dude, whenever you go into the deli, there's always that guy in front of you who doesn't know what he wants. Oh, what, kind of, what kind of bread is that? It's like, dude, stop making that fucking guy. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that dude, that dude is everywhere. <laughs> no, that's why I love old people. I love old people. They're always with their family photos. It cracks me up. They're always like, well, they're all proud. Like, well, we had five kids, and then they all had five, and da-da, da-da. <laughs> it's like, yeah, none of you did shit. I don't recognize anybody in that photo. You just made 30 people who are all taking a shit every day that ends up in a river. That's not a family photo, that's an environmental disaster and you framed it. <laughs> no, that's my solution for global warming. Everybody's talking about cars and oil, that doesn't matter. It's just too many people, you know, 
too many people doing it. She says, you know, you want to help the environment, just stop fucking. <laughs> right? I'm not saying stop fucking, but you know, pull out. <laughs> you can still have your fun, right? But you gotta stop looking at babies like they're these cute things, all right? They're not. They are, they are cute, but most of them are just gonna grow up, they're just gonna end up being another shithead in like an SUV that doesn't pull out far enough into the intersection, right? Now you gotta wait a whole nother light to make a left, and you're just sitting there losing your shit, screaming at your windshield with this dude who didn't need to exist. It's like, there's no reason for that guy. We got that guy. I don't know. That's my plan. They should just make babies illegal for like the next like 25, 30 years, right? <laughs> That'd be great. Think about it. Somebody's born, three people are born every second to one person dying, right? So if you're not making anybody, it's like, bam, somebody just died, right? Somebody just fell down some stairs. Somebody just tripped over a skateboard, right? And you know what? Fucking lanes just opening up on the highway, right? <laughs> you know, you get to work a little sooner. You're in a better mood. Dude, you get it down to like 30,000 people. 30,000 people will be the shit. All right, Super Bowl comes around, everybody can go. Right? Everybody can go. 22 of you get to play. The odds of you making it in the NFL, it's ridiculous. Dude, even if you suck, you could still you could block on punts. You'd be like a wedge breaker, or maybe be that guy holding the first down marker, like, yeah, I'm fucking doing something. You wouldn't have to recycle. Dude, there was 30,000 people, man. Everybody here, you could literally drive your own tank. You could drive a tank, you could throw toxic waste out the top. You could shoot a bald eagle right in the head. There's plenty of them. Plenty of them. Dude, they're shitting all over my tank. What the fuck am I supposed to do? <laughs> Look, people, I don't read, okay? Seriously, none of my shit is researched, you know? And out of all the bullshit I'm talking up here, I think I'm onto something with this, you know? It's like I'm eliminating people, but like no one has to die. That's it, just stop making... Dude, we're gonna end up like China. They got like over a billion people just, just jam-packed. Every day it's like the subway. People just standing there, you can't even fall asleep. Oh shit, sorry about that. Just jam-packed. You never think about that shit? Just standing there, we're gonna be sitting there. First of all, how easy is it to get away with the crime over in China, you know? First of all, you pick somebody's pocket, you don't, you don't have to run away. You just fucking weave your way back into the crowd and fucking stand over here. <laughs> Guy standing there like, dude, somebody just took my wallet! Dude, he's right over there! He's right over, he's right there! Dude, he's got black hair, he's five foot five, he's dressed like he's in Reservoir Dogs. He's right over there! No, that's where we're gonna be headed. How many more strip malls can you make? Places to get donuts and people to get their nails done. Everybody's all excited. This area is really, it's really exploding. It's really exploding. It's like, no, dude, people are fucking and then they're just building more shit. Just gotta get my shit together, man. That's basically it. Started going back to therapy again. I just can't, I can't. I just can't do therapy, I try. I start telling my stories, I just start fucking laughing. <laughs> and then the therapist is always looking at me like, you know, and I'm like, come on, man, it's kind of funny, right? Like, no, no, it's really horrific. So he's trying to get me to bring the walls down, so, you know, I finally, one therapy session, you know, I start getting a little emotional. And then all of a sudden he goes, he goes, okay, yeah, just breathe. And the second my brain was like, ah, oh, what a douche. And I just immediately just, <laughs> I just hate him though, just the wall just came back up again, you know? I don't know, maybe I'm just fighting it. You know, maybe this is who the fuck I am. I like Corvettes, you know? Maybe I should just be this, just start making some more money, you know? <laughs> you never think about this shit? I don't know how you guys, how do you stay married? How the fuck do you, you do it? I know you take the happy family photo as you're sitting there, you know? 
You never just think of that just someday, you know, just slamming the garage door in your head, putting yourself in a coma for a couple of... <laughs> just all happy? Okay, evidently this is a happy crowd. <laughs> I'm the only one who thinks they should, all right. I don't know. I gotta admit, the only thing that freaks me out about Los Angeles is, uh, is all the plastic surgery. I don't get it. Why do people get plastic surgery, you know? Why can't you just admit it's over? <laughs> you know, you had your time. Stop trying to look fuckable in your 50s. It's weird. With their faces yanked back, looking all shiny, right? Not to mention they haven't even figured it out. You know, why would you get a facelift? Can't you look at other facelifts and realize they haven't worked all the bugs out yet? <laughs> right, that's what you want to look like? Like you just lost a fight three days ago? <laughs> Don't be a hero. Let somebody else go in there. Take the fucking beach. You, you lay back. Wait it out. They're just lying to people. Oh no, it looks great, it looks great. Put a little ice on it, we'll see you in a couple weeks. All right, take it easy. Jesus Christ, what the fuck happened? We followed every step, did we miss something? Oh, hey, 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 oh, here's your keys, here's your keys. There you go, there you go. Almost didn't recognize you, you look so young. All right, take it easy. She gone? All right, she's gone. All right, shred everything, shred it. No, you're nuts. You wait it out, let them figure it out, then you fucking go in. Don't be a goddamn hero, you know? Look at hair plugs. Hair plugs don't look half bad now. Saw this guy the other night on TV, he's like, oh God, I wish I did this 10 years ago. It's like, no you don't. <laughs> 10 years ago, when they were stapling ant legs to the top of people's heads. <laughs> Remember that, your eyes would water looking at their hairline, like is that, is that sewn in? I see pine tar. They used to put you in like a headlock. Hold still. Use like a nail gun. Hold still. Guys would tap out after a row and a half. Fuck it. I don't give a shit. You wish you got hair plugs 10 years ago. Do you wish you got polio 60 years ago? What else is on your wish list, sir? No, you don't fuck with your face. Okay? I understand liposuction. They screw that up, you can put on a shirt, right? There's no shirt for your face. Who do they think they're fooling with this stupid, you know? And then you lie to yourself. I'm just gonna do it, I'm just gonna do this. Just gonna, just gonna, just gonna have this done. No, you're not, you're not. What are you, you're just gonna wax the fender on your car? Then that's it, and the rest of it looks all shitty? Well, maybe I'll just do the hood. And maybe I'll do the back. That's how it happens. Then you look like one of those real housewives. Like, Face all twisted up. <laughs> Fucking idiots. Anyway, look, they are they're idiots. Do they look like I'm in my 20s? No, you look weird. You look fucking weird. You still look like you're in your 50s. I just can't guess what year anymore because I've never seen that year. I've never seen that shiny fucking look. It's almost like you discovered a new age between 52 and 53. Yeah. People, there's nothing wrong with being 52 and looking 52. All right, you're 52. You didn't get fucked. Yeah. What would you rather be, 52 and look 52 or be 52 and look like a 28-year-old lizard? All right, that's your options at this point. <laughs> you know what's really, it's really like actually uh, embarrassing is that the facelift, that's predominantly a white problem. Have you notice that? I've never seen a black person with a facelift ever. Other than like the Jacksons, but they're all out of their minds, right? Because their dad made them rehearse all day and sleep in the fireplace. Right, jamming all nine, get in there you bastards! No hugs, no kisses. His face permanently twisted up from 50 years of screaming, SING, MOTHERFUCKER! <laughs> it's understandable with them. Do you know what I want to do right now? I actually want to learn how to fly a helicopter, man. I do, that's my latest thing. Oh, you know why it is? It's because I live in Los Angeles. Yeah, and it's an absolute clusterfuck. When you go into land in that city, just look out the window and just look at the complete lack of planning. It's not, not even zoning laws. They'll build like a skyscraper next to a house. 
next to a gun range, and then there's like a fucking daycare center, right? <laughs> the city doesn't even work, even when everything else works. So God forbid the dollar collapses or some crazy shit happens. Where, where are you gonna go in a city like that? So you guys are all right out here in Atlanta, you know? You're all right. I don't know, maybe in Atlanta might be crazy. You're on the outskirts, you're fine. You're fine. You don't live in a desert. You slam your face in a bird bath. You're cool, right? <laughs> Drink that water for a good 30 days. <laughs> LA, there's nowhere to go. That's why I love the helicopter. Dude, the helicopter is the ultimate fuck this, I'm out vehicle. <laughs> All you gotta do is assess the situation. Zombie coming up the street, fuck this. <laughs> Look, say me. Yeah, da, 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 you just land. You can sit there hovering. Just sit there in a hover, watching everybody getting killed. Sitting up there eating cheese and crackers with the red stick, you know? Yeah. So I told my wife I want to fly a helicopter. She's just like, yeah, no. <laughs> Which I know that came from a place of love, but it still kind of annoyed me, right? Just that she said that shit. Like then I was just gonna be like, oh, all right. Thought I was gonna get to do that, but you said no, so. <laughs> there goes that. Hey, what other dreams aren't I get, gonna get to achieve? You're like, do you already know or do you wait for me to ask? <laughs> yeah. I'm still gonna do it, I'm just not gonna tell her. I'm just gonna go out and do it, pass the goddamn class, and when I get my license, I'm not gonna tell her, I'm just gonna go out and I'm gonna buy a white silk scarf and I'm just gonna hang it by a nail in the living room. She's just gonna be like, what is that? What is that for? What is that? What does that mean? That yeah, someday you'll see. Someday you'll see when the shit hits the fan and you're freaking the fuck out and I'm taking branches off some unforeseen helicopter. What is that? Shut the fuck up and get in! I'm throwing my scarf on. Right? I wanna get a gun. I do. I really do. I never had that feeling before until I moved out to Los Angeles. This city just messes with your mind, you know? It's overpopulated, technically doesn't have a water supply, right? The dollar's crashing. Shit keeps you up at night. You're just sick in there. What am I gonna do when the zombies come? Right? Start reading up on shit. Get some powdered food, plant some zucchini. Get a windmill, right? And that's all well and good, but if you don't know how to fight, all you're doing is gathering supplies for the toughest guy in the block, right? Just thinking about that, what am I gonna do? Some dude turns me upside down, starts shaking the gold coins out of my pockets. I gotta get a gun. I was like, well, fuck it, let's get the shotgun. So he's all ready to box the thing up, and then I'm like, wait a minute. I live with my girl, I can't just show up with a shotgun, right? That's not some shit you can just come home with. If I found this stool on the side of the road, I can come home with this. Look at it, we can, we can refinish it, we can carve our initials in it, we can have a good time, right? Can't just show up with a shotgun, hey, I got it for us, right? One barrel for you, one for me, no. So she kiboshes the whole thing. So the other night, somebody broke into our car, sitting in the driveway. Starts fucking with her head, right? So she starts reading up on guns, you know? But she's reading too much, because now she wants to get one, but she's just like, well, I heard you gotta keep the bullets in the safe, keep the stock in the garage. And, it's, and then what? Then what, I run around the house and assemble it? There's some dudes chasing me with an ax? You know, even thinking this thing through, sweetheart. Just running around, where's, where's the scope? It's in the living room, he's in the living room! No, we're getting this thing. I want that fucking thing loaded right on the bedroom wall, right there. I'll put that thing up my jam jam sleeves. <laughs> Just like that. There's no other point. That's funny though, when you, when you talk about getting a gun, you know, people like they either totally for it or completely against it. You know, they either go nuts and start screaming, right? Or they start throwing out those stats. You know, actually you, you increase your chances of getting shot by 80% the second you get a gun in the house. Really? What, because I'm going to load it and shower with it? Like, eh, eh, eh. The fuck? I know it's dangerous. 
You get a pool in your backyard, you immediately increase your odds of drowning in your backyard, right? You couldn't do that before, now you step on a rake, in you go. No, I'm telling you, I don't buy into any of that shit. Stats are so fucking stupid, you know? Not that they're stupid, it's the way people apply them. You already have your mind made up, and then you go to I'mRight.com, and you start memorizing a bunch of shit, and then you just, just throw it up at people. This guy tried to get me to go scuba diving. I go, I'm not going, I don't want to get eaten by a shark. He's like, well, actually, 90% of shark attacks actually happen in shallow water. It's like, no shit, that's where the people are. <laughs> now, it's called the beach. 90% of people are frolicking along the coastline. It's like there's people swimming to Europe. Let's go to Iceland, you pussies! Right? I don't know, you know the greatest thing about this job is I don't have a boss. That's what I love about this job. I never wanted a job where I had a boss. That's why I used to always work in like warehouses. Because my boss gave me a rough time, I could just get on a forklift and just like drive away from him. <laughs> you know? And I realized I was too stupid to run a business. You know what I mean? I just knew I was never going to be that guy in like, you know, in the big office, big long table going, we know we, in the fourth quarter, we need to increase, increase production, okay? Kathy, you're using a little bit too many paper clips and we need to just kind of tone that down. I'm not singling you out. We're just kind of... I could never do it. So I realized the only thing I could ever do, my greatest thing I could ever do, was work in one of those cubicles. And I refuse to do it. Cubicle should be illegal, man. You know what a cubicle basically says? It basically says like, you know what? We don't think you're smart enough for an office, but we don't want you to look at anybody. <laughs> so you're gonna get in there and you're gonna shut your face. <laughs> and you just get in there and you're like hunched over, typing away. Around lunchtime, you pop your head up like a gopher, like, hey, Steve, you wanna get a sandwich or something? I said, get in there and shut your face. I was, I was just asking for a sandwich or something. God, I hate that guy. I really hate that guy. It's time to go on the internet and look for a weapon. Pathetic, man. You know what I love about the cubicle? I always love the pathetic attempt to try to make the cubicle like a home. You know what I mean? There's always like a stuffed animal in there, or like a picture of your mom with like her disappointed eyes looking back out at you. Like, why have you accepted this as your lot in life? Why don't you have the balls to get up and walk out of this thing? I'm telling you. Those people need to be rescued. You ever walk by a cubicle? The person in the cubicle always looks back out at you. Because they're starved for some sort of human contact. They'll just start up a conversation like, hey, hey, is it raining out? I haven't seen the sky in like six days. They don't let us look out the window. No, you know what I'm gonna do? Fuck all this comedy shit. You know, I'm gonna make my million. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come up with some sort of piece of shit that I can sell late at night for like 1995. Because <laughs> people, will, people will buy anything. Like those George Foreman grills. He sold a zillion of those. George Foreman is a boxer. What the fuck does he know about cooking? <laughs> Nothing. He's always talking about all the grease and the saturated fat. It's like, George, you're fat. <laughs> you ain't, you're not using it. You know what I mean? And people are, no, no, it's George Foreman. He lost to Muhammad Ali, and now he's selling grills. Well, I'll take one. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> people will buy anything. I'll tell you the best scam I ever saw in my life. You ever see the one with the dude selling the quarters? You ever seen that shit? This dude is selling quarters. How the fuck do you sell a quarter? It's a quarter. But the dude hypes it all up. You know, these, these, are, these are limited edition minted quarters. We give you a book, you can stick them in the book. Then he starts like yelling to me, this is unbelievable. You get a book, we're gonna put a quarter in, we're gonna add another, we're gonna add another quarter. This is unbelievable. That's two quarters and a book. That's a 50 cent value for only 19.95. People, we only have seven left. They always got like the number in the corner, that bogus number is just like going down. Just to scare all the rednecks, like, holy shit, they only got seven left. Let me get the card, I'm gonna dial the number, hurry! I didn't do, I didn't do shit today. I really, yeah, it's almost Jordan Club, I would just watch TV. I'm a fucking loser. You know, I was watching today, I was watching that show, uh, MTV Cribs. That's my show. You guys watch that show? You like that? You know the way they show the rock stars, the rappers' houses, and all their stuff? Does that show make you feel like a loser? <laughs> it's awful. 
self-esteem's out the window. I'm watching Britney Spears. But she's like 20 years old. She's like, oh my God, this is my helicopter. I had it spray painted pink to match my tube top. So cool. I put some glitter on the part. We're gonna fly up to the house. I'm like 34, sitting on a futon, eating macaroni and cheese. Oh my God. I'm a loser. I'll never own a helicopter. How the hell did she get a helicopter? I haven't accomplished anything. I'm a disgrace. You know what I love about that show though? All they're doing is showing you what not to do when you get rich. Seriously, because none of those people are saving their money. Half of them, all they have is one hit song. So should they really be buying all of that shit? Seriously, 20 room house, seven, eight cars. It's just like, dude, don't you watch behind the music? <laughs> you know what I mean? You're gonna be smoking crack in like six weeks. Hold on to this shit. They never invest it. They never get like, you know, CDs. They, they always like, I always wanted a Ferris wheel. So I got one big Ferris wheel. I got one from my monkey. <laughs> I have my own arcade. Dumb man, they're all gonna go broke. Stupid. They're stupid, man. You wanna know how to be rich. Don't look at a rapper, don't look at a rock star. They don't know what they're doing. Look at a guy like Bill Gates. That guy is good at being rich. You know he makes $30 million a day? Can you believe that? Look how he dresses. He dresses like he works in like a shoe store. Got that same piece of shit blue blazer. Well, it's very, you know, it's very, it works. Everywhere I go, gets my loafers, you know, kind of. He's on a budget. That's why he's always gonna be rich. He's not buying a bunch of flashy shit like walking around like an iced out laptop medallion hanging off his neck. Some fuzzy pimp hat to the side. Starting shit with IBM, Microsoft, son, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Sitting in a hot tub with some bitches. You know? <laughs> Have a midget in his crew just for the fuck of it, you know what I mean? Just starting shit. <laughs> Actually, my girl punched me in the head on Valentine's Day a few years ago. Yeah, you wanna hear this story? This is a great one. This is how much of a dick I am, that I can actually tell a girl I love her, give her a card, and somehow at the end of the night, she still blasted me in the head, you know? <laughs> I can't even remember what happened. All I know is she said some shit, then I said some stuff, then she said some more stuff, and I said, fuck it, I'm going for big air. I said the last shit, and next thing you know, she just came flying at me, right? Fist balled up, okay? And at first, she was just hitting me all in here, you know, which is acceptable, right? It's a holiday, let's fucking keep it nice, you know? <laughs> let's keep it nice, right? And I gotta admit, I was blocking most of it at first, right? I was doing the rope a dope. I was leaning back, I was pulling her head in, I was leaning on her, talking shit, trying to tire her out, right? And then all of a sudden, she just went up top, fucking bam, it hit me right in the side of the head. You know what hurt the most was not that she hit me, was that after she hit me, she didn't have the decency to hop back, like, like maybe something was gonna happen. She knew nothing was gonna happen. It's against the rules. So not only did she get to blast me in the head, she then got to do like this UFC talking shit thing in my face, <laughs> pointing. Oh, it's brutal. Then she started like breaking up some stuff. You know, of course it was all my stuff and I'm just standing there. Okay, don't look her in the eye. Stand as still as you can. Let her calm down. Oh, that's great. That's something mine from high school. That meant a lot to me. <laughs> evidently not to you. It's funny, if I was doing that shit, I'd have a cop with his knee in my back, but evidently you have a vagina, so that makes it okay. I just have to stand here as you break all my shit. I don't know. It's, it's gotta be me, it does, you know? I'm good at this, I fuck up my personal life all the time now. I really do, you know? I'm afraid to get married, man. Why would, why wouldn't, as, why man wouldn't be afraid to get married at this point? You know, look at Kobe, look at the shit he's going through right now. All right, guy's getting a divorce. His wife's gonna get 70 million bucks. Never hit a layup in her life. You know, can anybody explain these divorce settlements, can anybody make sense of these fucking things? Tiger Woods' wife, $250 million. She's a babysitter worth a quarter of a billion fucking dollars. 
Somebody, go ahead, somebody, explain, justify it. Justify it, what, what, he cheated on her? I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I don't give a fuck, he cheated on her. Great, the relationship's over right then. Kobe cheated, right? Shouldn't that relationship been over right then? Why did she hang around like some jaded cop for three years trying to get her fucking pension, right? Get that 10 years in. <laughs> I don't know, maybe that's too harsh. That shit bothers me, man. Dude, there is an epidemic of gold digging whores in this country. <laughs> and every night I put on the news and I'm waiting for someone to address it. Every night, never see it, you know? And every night I bring up gold digging whores and the whole crowd pulls back like I'm up here talking about Bigfoot, right? <laughs> like I'm saying the moon's made out of cheese or something. <laughs> talking about whores, people. They're everywhere. How many? How many more great men are gonna get chopped in half before we do something? Why is it so quiet in here? God damn, I don't get it. What is it, is it women? Do you think I'm calling you a whore? I'm not calling any woman here a whore, okay? So don't pull back, that, that's not fair, okay? If you brought up wife beaters, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like pull back. I get it. There's guys hitting women, they need to be stopped. We gotta understand that gold digging whores are the wife beaters for men. Yeah, they are, except we don't have that Rihanna lumped up photo in the end, so it's not obvious. It's in the eyes. It's in the lines in your face. It's in Mel Gibson's high-pitched voice on the answering machine. I had to give up my Laker tickets, right? That is the sound of a man being taken for everything he's got. I gotta tell you, it's just, I'm envious of women, okay? I'm not saying your problems get solved, but at least they're taken seriously. You know? People, you got 1-800 numbers, you, get, you, got, you got ribbons, there's groups. People give a shit. Anything happens to a guy, it's just considered funny. Some woman cut her husband's dick off, threw in the garbage disposal, and turned it on. People thought it was hilarious. They were like, hey, hey, Stumpy, nobody cares. Do you think if a guy removed a woman's titty and threw it in the dryer, anybody would be joking about it the next day? The entire country would grind to a halt. There'd be a moment of silence. The NFL would have some special colored headband everybody had to wear for an entire month. The most effeminate color they could possibly come up with. So, I don't know, my girl's been bugging me lately. She's ready to settle down. I think I'm ready to settle down too, you know? I got the one. I know I've been saying this shit for years. I have been, you know? She's great. The only thing I don't like is she, uh, she's really into reality TV. She watches all those dumb shows put 10 whores in the house. <laughs> Somebody tries to find a wife, right? She watches fat people cry about fudgicles. <laughs> just blubbering their eyes out. Oh, sometimes I don't even open the wrapper. I just start eating and then I get down to the stick and I know I should stop because it's made out of wood. <laughs> She's just there crying right along with them. Ah, throw yourself in the river, you fat fuck. <laughs> ah, she gets so mad at me. It's like, look, I don't put on TV to cry. I like to be entertained. I love when they fall on the treadmill and go flying into the drywall. It's like some modern day medieval weapon. I love it. All those horrific shows. Biggest fights we have. She watches uh, Intervention. There's enough, that, yeah, that's, you like that? Oh my God, it's so awesome. Watching a family completely fall apart. <laughs> What is entertaining about that when they had that classic before picture, the pre-meth picture? She was so beautiful. She was the prom queen. Everybody loved her. Then they cut to her like laying in like a gutter. I'll suck your dick. I'll suck your dick. I'll suck your dick. <laughs> no, we have these huge battles. You know what the maddest she ever got at me was? One time she was watching this show. It was like a poor excuse for The View. And they started talking about domestic violence. Right? For the nine millionth time this year, they're talking about domestic violence. Just in case, you know, you didn't get the memo. You know? <laughs> Evidently, you know, just some people didn't get it. It's not okay to slam your wife's head into the cupboard drawers <laughs> because she didn't dry the can opener off properly. You know? <laughs> it's gonna fucking rust! Right? How do you not know not to do that shit? Do they really have to keep talking about it? 
Uh, who, who, it's like wife beaters watching. For, oh, fuck. Ah, now I get it. Up to Daisy, sweetheart. Here we go. There you go. Oh. So at the end of the hour, they come to the logical conclusion. They're like, there is no reason to hit a woman. There is no reason to hit a woman. And I was just like, really? I could give you like 17 right off the top of my head. You could wake me from a drunken stupor. I could still give you like nine. Dude, there's plenty of reasons to hit a woman. You just don't do it. But to sit there and suggest that there's no reason Dude, the level of ego behind that statement. What are you, levitating above the rest of us? You're never annoying? <laughs> Women, how many times have you thought about slapping your, your fucking guy in the head this week? Every day! There you go. <laughs> Every day. You didn't do it, right? Oh, dude, it drives me nuts. There's no reason. There's no reason. Really? No reason? How about this? You marry a girl, you fall in love, you buy her a house. You go to work every day, paying off the house. You come home one day, she's banging the next door neighbor, hands you divorce papers, you gotta move out, sleep on a futon, and still pay for that house that she's gonna stay in. No reason. <laughs> I'm not saying you should do it, but there's plenty of fucking reasons in that arc of a story. No, there's like certain shit, like, I, like I, uh, beautiful women. I'm always suspicious of them. I don't trust beautiful women. You know why? Because I've noticed beautiful women are only around when you have shit. Oh. oh, what the fuck do you know? You're a woman, you wouldn't know, I'm a guy. I know, I'm telling you. When you're fucking broke, I swear you can't find a beautiful woman. There's trolls and midgets running around. Second you get some shit going on, women, beautiful women come out of nowhere like, oh my God, you have some stuff. Can you buy me some stuff? I want some stuff too. Buy me some stuff, I've always loved you. Then the second you go broke, oh my God, I left something over here next to this guy who has the stuff now. I'm not saying all women are like that, but there's women like that. I, well, those women, they stand at the finish line of a guy's life. They're not there in the beginning when you got the futon and you're trying to get your business going, you know what I'm saying? Because that dude could lose. He could go out of business. They don't want to lose it. They want a winner. So they stand, they don't give a fuck which winner. They just stand at the finish line. Every dude running by, they're like, I'll suck your dick, I'll suck your dick, I'll suck your dick, I'll suck your dick. Now this is where guys fuck up, is we should stay with the girl who was there for the futon, because she loves you when you're a loser. But we don't do that, we fuck up because the dick's like, hey, fuck you alone, this one over here. Six months later, you're doing a behind the music, yeah, I used to own that house, now that damn bitch took it from me. <laughs> I don't know, you know what, I just find women that just like, uh, I think they're great. I don't want this to come off like, I don't want to come off here like I'm some woman hater, because, you know, I know I'm a psycho, but it's just like, I don't know, I just find them to be like relentless. Just every day, they, they just, they just got to come at you. They just wake up, they have an agenda, and so they're like these psycho robots that never run out of batteries, and every day they just keep fucking, gah, 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 just keep coming at you. Right? You got to deal with that every single day. Hey, honey, you want to this And you literally, you know, Every day, it's, it's like waves hitting the beach, you know? Every day, just eroding a little more of your life away, you know? <laughs> just waking up inch by inch, you know, every day, just <laughs> Why are you hanging out with him? He drinks too much. <laughs> Where'd you buy that? That's ugly. Throw it out! <laughs> Till one day, you're just hanging out in the middle of a lagoon, just floating there with your baseball cards. You're waving to your friends back on the shore. Don't get me tickets, I still like sports. <laughs> oh, here she comes, here she comes. Hey, honey, how you doing? No, I'm trying to, I'm trying to learn how to, how to pick my battles with my girl, you know? That's what I am, you know? I used to argue all the time. I'm just trying to pick the battles. Some days, they, they come at you. You just, you just gotta let them go. You just let them go and follow them to whatever dumb shit they wanna do. Like, hey, let's go get a picnic. We'll have a picnic, you bring the good bank and you fucking... <laughs> then other days, you just, you just gotta get your hand up. You just gotta just create this perimeter or something for them to bounce off, like bang, you, you just send that psycho energy in another direction. <laughs> Buy yourself a couple of hours for freedom before they bounce off something else. Bang, bang, and they start coming back. Go see my parents. No, they're relentless, they never stop, and there's no reason for them to stop. 
You know why? Because you can't hit them. That's what it is. Think about that. There's no physical ramifications for being an asshole when you're a woman. Do you know how much of a, how much of a dick I would be if it was socially unacceptable to kick the shit out of me? Dude, I would be trashing everybody I saw. See some big muscle bound guy, hey, I go to the fucking gym. Slap his protein shake out of his hey, go fuck yourself, right? But I can't do that, right? Every guy has a line, and if I cross the line, I get blasted in the face. Totally acceptable, right? But with women, there's no line. They can just keep fucking, just keep coming at you. Dude, they can do stuff worthy of like a suplex, and they'll just stand right next to it. They don't even have the decency to run away. They like light your clothes on fire. They're like, ta-da, I did that shit. Oh yeah. And I was so proud of my work, I stuck around to see your reaction. I invited a couple of friends to heckle you as you try to stomp it out with your bare feet. Oh yeah, they'll like key your car, sign their name, Susan did this shit. And you're sitting like, now can I at least put her in a headlock, give her a couple of... Now, I feel bad for women that you, you never get to feel that. You guys should, should do it to each other, you know, just every once in a while. Just haul off and just blast one of your friends in the face, you know? It's good for you. <laughs> no, I know, yeah, I know, it hurts. You know, you can't feel your nose, your ears are ringing, but I'm telling you, man, it, it clears your head. And it causes you to, like, evaluate yourself. I swear to God, any time I ever got punched in the face, I was always pissed, but at some point during the drive home, I'd always be thinking, like, you know, it's kind of being a dick back there, you know? <laughs> and I really think about it, I probably shouldn't have said that last shit, you know? And you, you, you'd like make that adjustment. <laughs> this guy's an asshole. I can't believe he's just gonna say this kind of thing. Dude, they have all kinds of signs out there telling people not to hit women. People still do it. What do you think wife beaters are doing when they drive home? They're like so focused on hitting their wife, they, just, they got blinders on, they're not reading anything. They don't see that don't hit your, your, your wife. Billboard, they're still gonna do it. Did that get too weird for you guys? <laughs> Anywho, so I'm watching the Oprah Winfrey show. I like watching that show because uh, I like watching a guest because your guests are idiots. You know what kills me about that show? Every night Oprah is examining marriages and she's never been married. <laughs> and no one ever brings that shit up. They just listen to her. No one ever goes, wait a second, Oprah. You've never been married, so you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> and what kills me is the guy is always wrong. Every time they examine her, they, mathematically, that doesn't work out. At least once, the dude has to be right. You know what I mean? Never. The woman is always like totally innocent, like, I was just trying to make him some chocolate chip cookies, and he didn't think there was enough chocolate chips in the cookies, so he started beating me with the cookie pan. It was horrible. Then the guy's like always the biggest moron ever. What the fuck? I want to fuck cook. You didn't want to talk to Jeff. Look, I'm not saying guys aren't jerks. I'm a good example of it, but women can be jerks too. Like, you know a group of women I always wanted them to expose were those 24, 25 year old gorgeous women who hook up and marry like an 80 year old rich guy? You ever seen that? The billionaire, like fucking old dude walking around with this young hottie. Now, if the girl just came out and just said, look, all right, you know what? He's fucking rich. He's going to die, whatever, and I'm going to fucking make some money. I wouldn't have a problem with that, but they always got to bullshit be like, no, I love him for who he is. <laughs> There's nothing to do with the 60 million. There's just something about the way he drools in his bathrobe as he pushes the checkers along. It's just, you know, it's a great feeling. It's like, lady, you're humping him for his money. See, that's something you never catch a dude doing, okay? If some 80-year-old billionaire, billionaire old lady came walking down the street, started hitting on me, like grabbing my ass, like, hey there, sonny. Hey, you're pretty firm. Are you in the Navy or something? I'd just be like, lady, get away from me. Right, you're old, you're gross. I'm sure you were the shit back in the 20s when you're doing the Charleston, making beer in your bathtub, but you were at least four decades beyond fuckable. Sit down and knit something. How do you have sex with somebody 50 years older than you? The only way you can do it, you know what you gotta do? You gotta put the will on the headboard. 
So at any point when you start losing like your nerve, you can just read some of the shit you're gonna be getting like, oh my God, this is disgusting. I can't believe I'm doing this. Oh, a house in Miami, okay. Fucking, I can hang in there for a little bit longer. No, for some reason you can't, you can't ever like bring up shit that women do because they always brand you as like a woman hater. But they just go off on guys. They always have like more on guys. They don't listen. They don't fucking do this. They don't do that. You know, you can never have a show about, you know, like what about women who like kind of fake a pregnancy and then say they need 500 bucks for an abortion and then, then you find out later you paid their phone bill and their rent. Anybody? Anybody done that? Anybody been there? Never do a show on, oh, this is hurtful, blah, blah, blah. Women, women never do stuff. There's no women who would do that. <laughs> When you say there's no reason, that kills any sort of examination as to how two people ended up at that, at that place. You say there's no reason, whew, you cut out the buildup, you just left with the act. How are you gonna solve it if you don't figure it out? Look how awkward it is in here right now. I said you shouldn't hit a woman. I'm just saying, how come you can't ask questions? You can only ask questions about what the guy did. You can never ask about the woman. Why is that? Why is that? What is that? What, is, what does answer him right mean? What does that mean? Are you the idiot who got up halfway through the special during the bit and you're like walking around like I'm not fucking taping a special here? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Fucking had to ignore all of that and now you're gonna like yell out and not only that, yell something that makes no fucking sense whatsoever? Answer him, answer him. Every fucking special I do, there's always one. <laughs> always, right down the fucking middle. Talking about hitting women, sweetheart. And I think you just added another reason. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. You know this, I'm not even in a relationship with her and she's fucking nagging me. <laughs> fucking unbelievable. <laughs> Look, I understand hitting a woman's a bad thing, okay? Well, you, how come you can't fucking ask questions? I just don't understand. Like, if I got bit by a rattlesnake, wouldn't you guys have some questions? All right? How did it happen? Did you not see it? Were you fucking with it? How did this snake get so mad? It almost killed you. Firemen put out a fire. They don't just drive away afterwards. They sift through the debris. How did it start? Here's an oily rag. Right? Look, I realize I'm coming off pretty ignorant right about now. I realize that. Let me extend an olive branch then, okay? I realize that there's some animal guys out there, okay? Horrible guys, you know, have a rough day at the factory, come home, tuna casserole, and just start swinging, all right? <laughs> I'm not trying to say that those people don't exist. I realize they exist. They should be buried underneath the prison, okay? So if I can admit that, ladies, can you at least admit that every ass kicking doesn't just fall out of the fucking sky? <laughs> really? Even hockey has two minutes for instigating, right? <laughs> they understand that some back and forth happened before that shit, you know? I notice there's a weakness in my act, man, that I have to work on. I notice, like, anytime I'm imitating a moron, I always do it in a southern accent. <laughs> you notice that? I mean, you notice that in my act. I do it all the time because I'm exploiting a very little-known prejudice. There's a prejudice against the southern accent. Not if you got, like, a light one. You know, that's kind of cute. Girl makes her hot. You know, a guy can get laid or some shit, but, like... Or if you got a really harsh southern accent, you know, like if somebody came up here like, oh, I get to that uh, Br Brooklyn Bridge, you know, I get to Brooklyn Bridge. <laughs> Immediately, like, this guy's a fucking moron, right? <laughs> Just because of his accent. What I love about that theory is it's bullshit because there's smart and dumb people everywhere you go, so that means if Albert Einstein had a really harsh southern accent, no one would have listened to him. <laughs> he would have been up there saying all this brilliant shit like, hey! A equals MC squirt! <laughs> People go like, shut up, you redneck! Come on, man, I'm serious! This fucking shit works, all right? 
I'm up here trying to end the war, you know? Can't even comprehend what the fuck I'm talking about. I don't need to be here, right? I go fishing, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> so it's something I'm, I don't know, I'm working on that, but.